Greetings and welcome to Gifford's Lectures. So today, we are going to be looking at a GCE June 2021 A-Level Physics Paper 2 question. We are going to be looking at the question 1 of section 1 of the Paper 2 question paper. The question 1 was divided into two parts, that is A and B, and part A read. The force per unit length F between two current carrying conductors kept a distance A apart in a vacuum is suggested by engineering physicists to be given by F equals mu zero i1 i2 all over 2a where mu zero is the permeability of vacuum i1 and i2 are the current in the conductors determine whether the equation is homogeneous or not b state with the aid of an example one equation can be homogeneous but incorrect and that question was allocated for six marks solution to a an equation is said to be homogeneous if the dimensions and units on the left hand side of that equation corresponds to the dimensions and unit of the right hand side of that equation so this is the condition for an equation to be said as homogeneous so if an equation is homogeneous then you must evaluate the dimensions of the left hand side of that equation that is the side to the left of the equal sign and the dimensions of the right hand side of that equation and you check or you compare the two if they are the same then the equation is homogeneous and if they are not the same, then the equation is not homogeneous. So let's now have a quick revision on base quantities. So I'm going to display the base quantities and I highlight them and we revise together. So here is the table. And in this table, we have physical quantity, base unit, symbols, and dimensions. So for the length, as you all know, its base unit is the meter, its symbol little m, and its dimension capital L. For the mass, its base unit is the kilogram, its symbol little kg, and its dimensions capital M. For electric current, its base unit is the ampere, its symbol capital A, and its dimensions capital A2. You could also use capital I. It depends on you. You could choose to use capital I as such. But for our calculations, or we will always be using capital A. For time, its base unit is the second, its symbol little s, and its dimensions capital T. For temperature, its base unit is the Kelvin, its symbol capital K, and its dimensions capital K2. For the amount of substance, its base unit is the mole, its symbol little mol, and its dimensions capital N. For the luminous intensity, its base unit is the candela, its symbol little cd, and its dimensions little cd. It's very important for you to note that the symbol for the dimensions are always enclosed in square brackets. So when we enclose any quantity in square brackets, then you should have at the back of your mind that we are struggling to get to express it in terms of the base quantities using the dimension notation. So having revised the base quantities, the base unit, symbols, and dimensions, let's now move to determining the dimensions of the left hand side of our equation, which was given by F. Remember that the equation read the force per unit length capital F. So we are going to now let that our force be little f and our length be little l. It therefore implies that your capital F equals little f on little l, that is the force per unit length. It therefore implies that the dimensions of capital F must be equal to the dimensions of the force divided by the dimensions of the length. We know that the dimensions of the length equals capital L enclosed in the square bracket. So in the course of our derivations or in the course of our calculations, we are not going to always say capital L enclosing the square bracket. We are just going to say capital L and you should understand that we are talking about dimensions. So 
it will be written but i'm going to just say capital l so please bear with me so the dimensions of the force equals the dimensions of the mass multiplied by the dimensions of the acceleration remember that the determining equation for the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration and the dimensions of the acceleration equals the dimensions of the velocity to the dimensions of the time which equals the dimensions of the length to the dimensions of the time squared after expressing the velocity as the length all over the time right which is distance all over time taken right so the distance actually is the length and the length is a base quantity which has dimensions l and the time is also a base quantity which has dimensions t so we must always express any physical quantity we encounter in terms of base quantities it therefore implies that the dimensions of the acceleration equals l t to the power negative 2 o l times t to the power negative 2 and the dimensions of the force equals m l times t to the power negative 2 Therefore, the dimensions of the force per unit length equals mlt to negative 2 on L. And finally, the left hand side will have dimensions mt to the negative 2 and unit kilogram per squared second. So now, having looked at the dimensions of the left hand side, let us now move to determining the dimensions of the right hand side, which was given by mu0 i1 i2 all over 2a. So we are going to get the dimensions of mu0, the dimensions of i1, the dimensions of i2, and the dimensions of a. Remember that 2 is a constant, and so it is dimensionless. Okay, so remember that current has dimensions, capital A, and so i1 and i2 also have dimensions, capital A, since i1 and i2 are the current flowing through the conductors. Remember that 2 is a dimensionless constant, and hence it is ignored. A was the distance between the current carrying conductors and hence will have dimensions capital L. So what are the dimensions of mu0? For you to be able to get the dimensions of mu0, you must make mu0 subject of formula in capital F equals mu0 i1 i2 all over 2a. Therefore, mu0 will be equals to 2 fa all over i1 i2. Remember that f was equals to little f on l and when you do your replacement you have mu0 to be 2 little f a all over little l i1 i2 so the dimensions of mu0 will therefore be equal to the dimensions of the force multiplied by the dimensions of the length since your little f was the force and your little a was distance divided by the dimensions of the length multiplied by the dimensions of the current squared since your little l was the distance and your i1 and i2 where the current flowing through the conductors so for your length you know that it has dimensions capital L current has dimensions A and current squared will have dimensions A squared so we are getting this quantity so that we will end up replacing them in our expression for the dimensions of mu0 we also know that the dimensions of the force equals the dimensions of the mass multiplied by the dimensions of the length multiplied by the dimensions of the time raised to the power negative 2. And so the dimensions of mu0 will be equal to the dimensions of the mass multiplied by the dimensions of the length squared multiplied by the dimensions of the time raised to the power negative 2 divided by the dimensions of the length multiplied by the dimensions of the current squared. So we therefore have mu0 now, that is the dimensions of mu0 to be equal to the dimensions of the mass multiply by the dimensions of the length, multiply by the dimensions of the time, raised to the power negative 2, divided by the dimensions of the current squared. So how do we obtain a single length here? It's simply because a single length here cancelled the length we have down, and so we're left with this one. That is what we have below here. We therefore now have the dimensions of mu0 to be equal to the dimensions of the mass, multiply by the dimensions of the length, multiply by the dimensions of the time, raised to the power negative 2, multiply by the dimensions of the current raised to the power negative 2. So now, having obtained the expressions for the dimensions of all the physical quantities on the right hand side, let us now move to determining the final dimensions of the right hand side. So let's remember that the right hand side is given by 
mu0 i1 i2 all over 2a with the expression for the dimensions of mu0 obtained and with the dimensions of i1 i2 and of a being replaced in the expression for the dimensions of the right hand side we are going to obtain the final expression for the dimensions of the right hand side to be given by mt to the power negative 2 which is essentially equal to the dimensions of the left hand side so the right hand side has dimensions m to the negative 2 and the right hand side has units kilogram per square second since m is the dimensions for mass and t is the dimensions for time that is why we have this unit since the dimensions of the left hand side corresponds with the dimensions of the right hand side hence the equation f equals mu0 i1 i2 over 2a is homogeneous so let's move to the b part of the question remember that the b part of the question asks us to give a reason why an equation may be homogeneous but incorrect and to give a concrete example so solution to b a very good reason is that the method of homogeneity tells us nothing about dimensionless constant hence the value for numerical coefficients cannot be verified a very good example is k equals 3 mv squared this equation is actually homogeneous but it is incorrect you can go ahead to check if this equation is homogeneous or not but we know very well that the formula to calculate the kinetic energy of a system is equal to half m v squared and not 3 m v squared if you check you are going to discover that this equation is homogeneous this two is homogeneous and it corresponds to this left hand side but the constants are different so the method of homogeneity tells us nothing about dimensionless constants hence the value for numerical coefficients cannot be verified so we cannot verify if this equation actually has constant half two three one or any number of your choice So I hope you loved the video. If you did, please kindly subscribe to my channel and give me that thumbs up. Thanks very much for watching Gifford's lectures and please don't leave without subscribing.